Hey, it's Mike from It's Relational. I want to thank you for jumping on and giving me just a few moments of your time today. I want to talk a little bit about how do you make a good gathering great? Now, you may be getting ready to be around some friends and family. And how do you make a good gathering? How do you make it great? Now, I know this is going to be helpful to you as well as all the other resources that we have on this channel. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and then you won't miss out on anything. Now, no doubt that you're going to be around people who are really struggling right now. Struggling in life, maybe struggling financially, maybe struggling in a relationship, a marriage, uh, maybe with their teenager, with a parent, step-parent, step-son, child, sibling. Uh, maybe there's people that are struggling with certain life controlling issues, uh, maybe certain attitudes that are destructive. Uh, I mean, let's face it, and, and you know, it's been a tough year on everybody, hasn't it? Maybe that person who's struggling is you. So in the meantime, we've got a couple gatherings. We've got some holidays to navigate through. Probably gatherings quite possibly unlike any kind of gathering you've ever had before. So what do we do? Many of us, we're just going to try to get through it, right? We're, we're going to hide behind that mask of, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. Every, everything's fine. I'm, I'm doing good. When deep down inside, we know that we're not doing that well. We have every intention of keeping things above the surface. We don't want to be too vulnerable. We don't want to let our guard down too much. Um, we're going to avoid certain conversations. We're going to redirect when, uh, when, when those awkward topics come up. I mean, we just want to get through it. And maybe I, I'm like that way. Sometimes I just don't feel like I have the emotional capacity, the emotional willingness, or the emotional strength to really engage at a deeper level. I just want to slip in, put in my time, hide behind somewhat of a fake smile. I mean, be nice and everything, but uh, then I want to get out. And uh, I just want to survive. I just don't want to go there sometimes. Well, I, I, what I've learned in my life is that in those times when I want to run and hide, I want to isolate myself, that's the time that I need to stay put and to engage. And when I get on the other side of that wall, that's, wow, when I begin to receive the very, very thing I've been pushing away, I begin to, to receive it. And it's almost like that healing starts to pour into my own soul. So something that has helped me when I find myself in those situations is to take the focus off of myself and my thoughts and how I'm feeling and to become more aware of the people around me. And how I do that is I let my curiosity get the best of me. And what I've found is that when my curiosity gets the best of me, it helps me to get the best out of those around me. And I focus on doing more listening than talking. Don't be that person that has an answer to everything, that has an opinion about everything. Now, you may have an opinion about everything, but not everybody wants to hear it. And not everybody thinks it's as important or right on as you do. So learn to do a lot, a lot more listening than talking. Because remember, people won't always remember what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel how they felt when they were around you. So be a curious person. And one of the ways to do that is by learning to ask some great questions. Open-ended questions, not closed-end questions that somebody can answer with a yes or no, a one-word answer. No. Learn some open-ended questions. Now let me give you a bunch. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So one of the topics that's for sure to come up is about your job or about school. It's kind of the catch me up question. Hey, what are you doing for a living? Where are you going to school? What's your major? So instead of asking a closed end question, how's your job, which can be answered in one word, fine. Why don't you ask an open ended question like this? So what about your job do you like the most? What about your job do you not like? See, now you're giving them an opportunity to be more descriptive of their job or school. 
And then that can lead uh, to this question. So what is it about your job that gets you up in the morning every day? Or you can ask, what is it about your job that keeps you hitting the snooze button like five times in a row? Then that can lead to even more questions like, okay, so if you could do something that you're passionate about and get paid for it, what would that be? Hey, let's dream a little bit. Talk about that a little bit. Then maybe you could, it could lead to this question, what steps have you taken to make that a reality? Or, you know, what steps do you need to take? Some great coaching questions. And again, you're letting somebody talk and explore with you. Instead of you, you doing all the talking, now you're just seeing somebody unfold before your very eyes. That's how you make a good gathering become great. And there's, there's more, so let me give you a few more here. Another unfortunate go-to question is, how's it going? Again, not much thought or effort has to go into answering that question. So why not ask this question? What's a challenge that you're currently facing right now? Or um, what are you really excited about lately? What are you thinking about? What are you dreaming about? Let, let's talk about it. See, those are questions that, wow, somebody can really go somewhere with. And being that it's the holiday season, there's some great questions around that. I mean, you can ask, uh, so what's your favorite holiday and why is it special to you? Or if there's an empty chair around your table this year because maybe somebody passed away or maybe somebody couldn't make it, you can ask, you know, what's your most cherished memory with so-and-so? Uh, maybe with grandma or with, with pappy. Um, and you'd be surprised even with maybe, uh, maybe even a pet that passed away this year, what great stories and maybe even some laughter can come up when we talk about those kind of questions. Here's another one. If you could rewrite the history of your life, what would you change? What would you do differently? Now remember, people may not remember everything that you say, but they will remember how you made them feel. And when you begin to ask great questions, wow, it opens the door, it builds a bridge into people's lives. And here's why this is so important. Because maybe down the road, some of these choices or decisions that people have made, they begin to catch up with them and maybe there's some consequences that they're living in that it creates a crisis moment in their life and they're gonna remember this conversation they had with you. They're gonna remember how they felt when they were around you. Maybe when they need advice, maybe when they need just somebody to listen to them, they're gonna remember that you were that person because you built a bridge and you were curious about them and you asked some great questions. Granted, sometimes these conversations don't happen in a group setting, uh, but maybe it's the time just to step outside with somebody and you know, you gotta take a little walk and make room for dessert, right? And maybe that's the time that you can ask them one of these great questions. So there you have it. I know these ideas will help you to make your good gatherings become great. And listed below in the description are all these questions and even more resources that I know will help you as well. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then you won't miss out on any further content. Take care.